Okay, Mr. Leong, mm. I heard you have a very high IQ. You heard right. Wow, can you impress me with your IQ later? Sure, no problem. Okay, so let me give you an IQ test. Okay. Okay, so what you see on the screen now mm -hmm. are four beautiful photos. Very beautiful. Yes, yes, indeed, right? So it's our very handsome Mr. Tim. In, okay. You know, okay, I don't want to say it, but you know, Mr. Hans Mr. Handsome Tim, four Still photos of him. Yeah, looking four. good, looking yes. good. Mm. So can you help me arrange these four photos in a oh. particular order? Notice the pattern and okay. arrange it in a particular order. Okay, so these are the photos, right? Mm -hmm. I think I will arrange it in this manner. Ah, ah interesting see. way to do it. Okay. Can you enlighten me on your reason of doing it? Sure. So if I take a look on the left photo, right, uh, he is very uh, well dressed, okay. uh, very prim and proper. Mm -hmm. This is how he looks like at the start of the day, mm -hmm. right? So as time passes by, as he teaches more and more classes, teaches more and more of you guys, uh, you notice that that is the end of the day. He state how he looks like, right? A lot of buttons uh, unbuttoned. Uh, he doesn't smell as good anymore. Uh, and his hair is unkempt, very disheveled, right? Yes. Right. So I think I'm going to arrange him in chronological order for a particular day as a teacher for him. I see. Yes. So this, I think I would say that this is an increase in entropy. Now, based on what I explained, Mr. Yap, mm. can you share with me what do you think uh, entropy really means? So based on the way you uh, arrange, right? So mm. from uh, Mr. Tim with a prim and proper look mm. to uh, at the end, not so proper, okay. more messy. Mm. So I would think that entropy means a measure of the messiness of the system right. or what we call in chemistry term, the disorder of the system. Right. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So what does it mean about a uh, high or low entropy then? So if you look at the left photo, right, he is very um, orderly, mm -hmm. he's very uh, uh, prim and proper, so therefore we're going to say that he has a low entropy. Yep. But if you move as time passes by, the last photo that you see over there, you notice that he's going to have a lot, he's very messy, he's very disorderly. Mm -hmm. So therefore we say that he's going to have a high entropy. Okay. Right. So therefore the larger the entropy, the more disorderly there yes. is. Yes. Right? So, um, uh, Mr. Yap, let me ask you a question, right? So, in terms of um, how easy, do you think it's easier to achieve high entropy or low entropy? Uh, you mean, let, let's go back to the example of uh, Mr. Tim again. Yeah, right? sure. So, uh, I, I know Mr. Tim for uh, close to a year. Right. right? Based okay. on his, uh, my understanding of him, oh. I mean, it's easier for him to get into a state of undress right, right, than, right. Uh, than a state of dress. So, he prefers to unbutton his shirt. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, right, right, right. So, um, that is actually consistent with my second law of thermodynamics, right? Ooh. That for any kind of spontaneous reaction, the entropy will usually increase. Okay. Okay, so it's the same thing as like a room, right? Yeah. So uh, I hope that you're watching this in a room right now. Mm -hmm. uh, look at your surroundings now. Uh, do you think your, 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 your state of your room, uh, is it in high entropy or low entropy? I mean, I don't have to answer that. Uh. Oh, they, okay. know their, they know the answer in their hearts. Uh, oh, right? Right, so let's right, not right. expose that. Oh, sure. <laughs> so uh, that is exactly the idea of entropy over here. Yep, yep. Now, Mr. Yap, can you run us through a little bit more about uh, uh, the idea of entropy in chemistry terms? Right, so mm. essentially, once again, entropy, in terms of the definition, it mm. is essentially the measure of the disorder of the system. Mm -hmm. So if we say something has a large entropy or high entropy, mm. it means that the system is very disordered, mm. there's a higher degree of randomness, mm. okay? And we also say that there are actually more ways to distribute the particles and energy of the system, right? Okay. Now. In, in this topic, other than the entropy value itself, what we are concerned with is the entropy change, mm -hmm. delta S. Now, change is always final minus initial. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about entropy change of a reaction, we, talk, we are actually referring to the entropy of the products, subtract away the entropy of the reactants. Now, if the products are more disordered, mm -hmm. it has a higher entropy, mm -hmm. and therefore we say entropy change is positive. Right. Now, conversely, if entropy decreases through the reaction, then the entropy change will be negative. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's try to consolidate this with a simple example using the diagram shown on the screen. Mm -hmm. So this diagram shows the solid particles mm -hmm. arranged on the left and the liquid particles arranged on the right. Mm -hmm. So when it melts, when the solid melts, the mm -hmm. particles change from an orderly arrangement to a disorderly arrangement. Right. So Mr. Leong, in terms of the messiness and the disorder, mm. right, obviously the system is getting uh, more messy. Right. So when the system is getting more messy, the liquid state has a higher entropy mm -hmm. and we say that the delta S is actually positive. That's right. So of course the converse will be true. If we yep. do freezing, everything will just be the opposite. Yep. Mm. Now what we're going to do next, right, is we're going to pay attention to the four main factors that affect entropy. Okay. Uh, the first of which is going to be on temperature. Yep. So I think this one is pretty straightforward. So if I take a look at a system where you suddenly increase temperature, right, uh, how do you think the entropy will change? Mr. I mean, when temperature is higher, the particles they possess more kinetic energy. They're okay. going to be moving more randomly and rapid rapidly in all directions, right? That's right. So the entropy therefore will be higher, mm -hmm. and we would say that the there are more possible energy states. 
states to distribute the particles so therefore uh, entropy change is positive that's right so that will be the first factor yep. quite straightforward now the second one is going to be a phase transition or what we call a change of state uh, the three methods of uh, three states of matter is gases liquids and solids yep. right so in terms of their entropy wise uh, which one do you think will have the highest entropy I mean, uh, what we seen just now, right? Mm. So the gaseous state, the particles are most uh, uh, disordered and most random in terms of their movement. So mm -hmm. I would think that the entropy is the highest for the gas. That's right. So for gases, highest entropy. Uh, and this is much, much higher as compared to liquids and solids. Yep. I think the reason is pretty obvious yep. because gases, they are really random. They are really fast. Uh, you When you compare it against the liquids and the solids where they are much more in an orderly state, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, the entropy of the gas is much, much higher than that of the liquid or the solid. Yep. Now, the third factor that we're going to look at is going to be the number of uh, particles over here. So we'll jump straight into an example, uh, which is using N2O4, uh, is going to break down to give you N, uh, 2NO2 over here. Mm. So um, I think in order to understand a little bit more about the entropy change, uh, Mr. Yap, can you share with me an analogy here? Okay, so I mean, imagine there's a party, right? The party initially only got the two of us, right? right. Sounds like a boring party. Okay. But as more people come to the party, right? Mm. You know, we're going to mingle with them, you know, we're going to you know have some fun together. Sure. So, you know, it's going to get more noisy easy, it's going to get rowdier. So in terms of the messiness and the disorder of mm. the system, what do you think is going to happen? I think it's going to get more disorderly, which yep. means that the uh, S is going to increase yes. and delta S will be positive. Yep. Right. So uh, with that, we can actually look at this because the number of particles in the system increases from one mole to two moles. Of course, you're going to have more ways of arranging the particles, which contributes to an increase in S yep. and therefore your delta S will be positive. Right. Yes. So this is for the gaseous system. Let's look at a second example where we look at a aqueous system. Now for ecosystem, it's going to be the same thing as well. Yep. So Mr. Yap, can you run us through this? All right, so let's look at the left-hand side of the equation first. Mm -hmm. There are actually four uh, moles of aqueous particles. Yes. Okay, and, and how on the right-hand side, mm -hmm. seven moles of aqueous particles, right? Yes. So four moles of particles increase to seven moles of particles, right? Mm. So they are, the system is going to get more disordered. Mm. Entropy is higher. Mm. Delta S is going to be positive. Sure. Now, Mr. Yap, I'm going to throw you a challenge. Huh? Now, okay. let's take a look at the new equation that I wrote over here, the one in blue. Okay. Uh, observe this, study this properly, and can you tell me how would the entropy change be like? Right, so using the same framework, yep. left-hand side, two moles of particles. Okay. Right-hand side, three moles of particles, right? Okay. So two increase to three, mm. right? Bigger, right? So entropy is higher, delta S is going to be positive. Okay, unfortunately, this is wrong. Oh, no. Okay, why is that so? So here, it turns out there's additional uh, information that must pay attention to. So if I take a look at the states over here, right? You notice that there's going to be a difference in the, uh, the okay. state symbols. Yes, yes. Some of them are gaseous, some of them are aqueous. Yep. So in terms of uh, uh, the different states over here, right? Just now earlier, we mentioned that um, the one for the gases is going to have the highest entropy. Yep. Now, this implies the fact that um, every time if there's a change in the number of gases, right? that will actually uh, affect the entropy change the most. Yeah. Okay. So this means that I'm going to correct your uh, understanding a little bit. Okay. Instead of just looking at the change in the number of particles, right? Uh, what is more important is actually look at the change in the number of gaseous particles. Okay. So using this new theory, this revised theory, can you change your answer as well? So I mean, now if you're asking me to focus on the gaseous particles, mm -hmm. on the left-hand side, there's only one mole of gaseous particle. Okay, there's only one gas mole, yes. right? And then uh, right-hand side, there's zero moles of gaseous particles. Okay. So there's a decrease in the number of moles of gaseous particle, mm -hmm. entropy is going to drop, delta S is going to be negative. That's right. So at the end of the day, when you look at any chemical reaction, the first thing that you should always focus on is the change in the number of gaseous, gaseous particles, particles, right? Uh, after which, uh, if it's uh, no more gases, then you look at the next uh, most, uh, will be the liquid and will be the solids eventually. Yep. Mm. All right, the last one that we're going to look at is going to be of mixing of particles. Mm -hmm. So uh, using the diagram over here, let's say I have two boxes, one of which is red particles, the other is going to be a white, part uh, white particles. And if I want to mix them together with an increase in volume, I'm going to experience an increase in the entropy. Yeah. Right? So Mr. Yap, another analogy, please. Okay, analogy. Yeah. Mm. Now, Mr. Leong, do you like to play soccer? Not really, no. Do you watch soccer? No. Okay, good. Okay. Now, so if you focus on the left box which contains the red particles, oh. let's say they are Liverpool players oh, right, okay. standing on one half of the soccer field. Right. Then the white particles are Tottenham players standing okay. on the other half of the soccer field. Right. Now when the referee blows the whistle and the match starts, mm -hmm. right, the particles can mix so the players are starting to uh, you know, kick some balls around. right? So they're going to okay. play the game of soccer. Right. So they are mixing together so you would think that they are going to be more disordered. right? Okay. Right? So therefore the entropy is higher. Oh wow, Mr. Yap looks like uh, you are really uh, a huge football fan. Eh? Actually I don't watch soccer at all. Okay, can. Good analogy. So um, coming back to the chemistry part of it, uh, you notice that every time you mix two particles with an increase in volume, 
then entropy is going to increase. So a classic example over here is what happens if you add a solvent into uh, another solution. So uh, if you add solvent, number one, you're going to experience an increase in the volume. And number two, there's going to be more particles, which co also corresponds to more ways to arrange all your particles inside the new solution. Yep. So of course, your entropy is definitely going to increase. Yes. Okay, Mr. Leong. Mm. She are talking about all these factors. Uh. Right. It's a bit dry. Oh, you need some water? Uh, no, oh, I don't okay. want water. Oh. So, let's spice things up a bit. Oh, sure. Okay, I heard you are afraid of heights. Huh? Am I? Okay. So, how about we go for bungee jumping? Uh, right okay. now. Okay, sure, let's go. Huh? Hey, why you agree so readily? Why you, are you so spontaneous? Whoa, 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 whoa. This coffee is cold already. Hey, intern, help me buy a new cup of coffee, please. Ah. Ah. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, while waiting for my new coffee to come, huh? uh, Mr. Yap, mm -hmm. let's let's talk a little bit, okay? Let's talk, I mean, let's talk about some chemistry. Huh? I thought you mean to talk about life. Uh, chemistry first. Okay. Uh, so, if I take a look at this uh, cup of coffee okay. cooling down, okay. Uh, okay. it is a spontaneous process. Mm -hmm. But can you tell me a little bit more about its entropy then? I mean, the temperature decreases, right? The mm. coffee cooled down, the temperature must have decreased. So, mm. I would say that the entropy decreases, the entropy change is negative. Oh, okay. Uh, that sounds a little bit weird, right? Because okay. if you have a negative entropy, how could it be a spontaneous reaction? Normally, um, if you want a spontaneous reaction, the entropy will usually increase. Okay. So yes. why do you think that is so? Good question. Mm. So I mean, there must be another factor that comes into play okay. when when this when we talk about a spontaneous reaction. Then. Sure. Yeah. What what kind of factor do you think this is? I mean, this is this topic is about energetics, right? So this okay. is the part two of the topic. So right. I, I, I believe I need to use some concepts taught in part one, right. which is the enthalpy change, delta okay. H. Okay. So this coffee is cooling down. This mm. cooling down process is what we call an exothermic reaction because okay. heat is released to the surroundings. Okay. So it's an exothermic cooling process. That's right. So now you realize that spontaneity of a reaction is actually dependent on two very important energetic yes. terms, right? Uh, one of which is enthalpy. The other one is going to be entropy. Yes. So to group them all together, I think we would like to collectively call it a new energy term okay. called the Gibbs free energy. Uh, sorry, Gibbs free energy change which is denoted by delta G delta over here. G, yes. okay? So uh, ultimately, uh, delta G is going to be the main indicator for spontaneity of a reaction. All right, so spontaneity simply means, uh, when we say something is uh, spontaneous, when mm -hmm. a reaction is spontaneous, we say we, we mean that the reaction can occur on its own without an external driving force. You don't right. need to pump in any energy or whatsoever, mm -hmm. it will just happen on its own. Right. Now, in terms of the value of delta G, mm -hmm. if delta G is a negative value, I mm -hmm. know it's a bit counterintuitive, but okay. if delta G is negative, we would say that the reaction is spontaneous. Right. It will happen on its own. Mm -hmm. Now, if delta G is positive, it's mm -hmm. the opposite. The reaction is not spontaneous. You need to pump in energy to drive the reaction forward. That's right. Okay. Now, a uh, common misconception that students will have here mm -hmm. is this. Uh, so they will always think that a spontaneous reaction means the reaction occurs very quickly. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. Mm -hmm. A spontaneous reaction simply means that the reaction can occur on its own mm -hmm. without external driving force. It does not tell you how fast or slow the reaction occurs. So spontaneity is not equal to weight. That's right. So we mentioned earlier just now that delta, uh, delta H and delta S, right, are the two main factors affecting spontaneity. So uh, we, we accumulate in this thing called the delta G. So it turns out there's going to be an equation that relates them all. And okay. it's given over here for me. Uh, delta G equals to delta H minus T delta S. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Leong, mm. this is, looks like a, a bit complicated for, my, for me and my math not very good. Oh. So can you give me a shortcut? Because you're a man of shortcuts, right? Sure. So um, we have G, the letter G. Okay. We have H. Uh, we have T and S. Uh, what kind of word do you think we can use to connect them together? Uh, let's play the game again. Okay. Mm. So the word is go. Oh. oh, okay. So if I take a look at this, uh, delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. So obviously the letters are swapped. Uh, the O has no meaning. La. So okay. it's just a shortcut for you to remember this uh, the formula a bit better. Okay, but Mr. Leong, mm. what if the student is scared of those? Okay, uh, then moving on, uh, if I take a look at this formula, one of the important things to pay attention to is the units of the equation, right? Okay. So first things first, you must understand that delta G always has the units of kilojoules per mole. Mm -hmm. And you realize that uh, from the previous chapter, delta H also has the yep. same units, right? Yep. Now, the second part over here, there's a T. Now, this T is what we call the absolute temperature. Yep. And what is the units for absolute temperature? Uh, Kelvin. Kelvins, right? Uh, and because of that, the units for delta S will be a little bit different, okay. right? So I'll derive this here for you. Now, in order to match up to the left-hand side having the units of kilojoules per mole, your delta S must definitely have a kilojoules per mole over here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but you realize that the delta S is multiplied by a T whose units is K. 
So Mr. Yap, can you suggest for me, what do you think uh, I should do to the K? To, uh, what should I do to uh, the unit so that I can get rid of the K, so the units matches up to the left hand side? So K must be multiplied by the inverse of K for it to cancel out. So That's K right. minus one. That's right. So this will be the units for delta S. Yes. Okay. But one warning here, uh, you will notice that when you, if you look at questions or if you look at uh, literature values, right? Uh, delta S is usually not given in kilojoules per mole. Okay. They usually give you in terms of joules per mole per Kelvin instead. Yep. Right. So Mr. Yap, can you tell me how to convert into kilojoules? I mean, maths is not my strong suit. But okay. I would think that joules to kilojoules are... Uh, Mm. must be multiplied by 1000. You are correct in the way that your math is not good. Okay, okay? so actually it's not multiplied by 1000. Uh, from joules to kilojoules, you have to divide by 1000. Okay? okay, so that's something that you must pay attention to as you do the calculations in class. Yep. See you guys. Okay, can you say see you guys? See you guys. Okay, see you guys. Bye-bye.